Okay, come on, this has got to work. Come on, be my friend, be my friend. It's really out of time! Welcome to Plastician's Lab, a show about what's happening in electronic music, grime and beyond all across the UK. Today I'm coming at you from Pirate Studios Notting Hill, where I'm going to be setting two producers the challenge of making a beat within one hour using the same sample pack. Up first we got Lucy, a six-figure gang affiliate whose atmospheric grime, beats and bass music have set the UK and beyond alight. Second up we have Iconica, an acclaimed producer whose productions on Hyperdub and other labels have spanned everything from drum and bass to R&B. They'll each have an hour to create something in the studio. Neither of them have heard what's on this USB until today. Let's get them in the studio and see how they get on. <sighs> All right, so Plastician's given us this sample pack. It's called Stish. All right, let's listen to these things. A few claps. Cool. <laughs> OK. Cool, I like that one. I like that one. Okay, cool. So, sample packs. Let me find the samples. Where are they? Let me find a battery. Let's just drag them like this. Battery is like, I use it as a drum machine for other kits, and then you can also use it for the drums that it has inside of it, which I'm very excited about, because there's like 808s and 909s. Um, it's really, really helpful, and there's like built-in limiters and saturators, and, and I'm a big fan, because it makes my workflow a lot quicker. So it means I can listen to all these lovely samples like this. What is that? Stish Bell 1C is sounding like an absolute shout. What was that thing I liked? It was like a hit. Yeah. All right, let's get into arrangement view. OK. Right, uh, metronome. in there so um, um, I don't have to listen to the metronome. Yeah, I guess we're going for a trap <laughs> crime thing. Make it sound really bro -y. Let's chuck it there for the time being. I need something cheeky in between. Maybe another hi-hat, just to give it a bit more syncopation. Yeah, sorry, I think about like <laughs> each sound a bit too. Um, like I just want to make sure everything's set up nice. I don't know, I feel like I'm playing like a little game, like you have to like try and make the, se like, the sound you've chosen to use. You have to try and make it fit somewhere in the puzzle. Maybe we could do something with this bit. I need to chop it up, rearrange it a bit. Oh yeah, I like that one, don't I? Let's use this somewhere. See what it sounds like there. Alright, what are these levels saying? Alright, let's double that up. Okay, I'm happy with that 8 bar loop. I use a lot of audio clips, like I just layer them a lot. This will sound nice once it's side chained. I have a feeling. We usually have just been starting off with samples and building like atmospheres and then moving on from them because um, drums, sometimes I find it hard to build melodies around drums. Melodies or like even just vibes around drums like have a really strong and then it just becomes a loop and then it's just a waste of time. There's a really annoying frequency in those bells though. Um, I'm not really sure where it's coming from. We've just got loads of drums. Yeah, I like that. So it's also, it helps to do the synths first because then it's easier to tune your drums to it. 
I might use an absinthe now. Sometimes, if it's like an atmospheric track, I'm not like a super pro at absinthe, but um, I've got some like presets I've made that sound okay. <laughs> I have this like waves plugin called Mondo Mod. That's like one of my favourite things in the whole world. And it like automatically pans things left and right or like circularly. I can really like I mean that's a bit Just want it to sound a bit uncomfortable. <laughs> a bit sorry. I don't wanna like give you a bad trip. This is just things I've recorded. I got a little handy cam. At this point, it's just for like textures, and then I can drop stuff if I need to. But this is like the build up anyway, so it's just like the more stuff, the better, usually. Okay, I'm gonna try and take a little bit of that. I don't want the whole thing. Consolidate that, and let's loop that for like a texture. I do this little trick sometimes. I um, like to gate something but then sidechain it to the hi-hat group, maybe. See what that sounds like. Okay, so you're doing the same thing as the hi-hats. She added delay afterwards. Let's use my 808. Let me just mute that kick so I can just hear everything. Strip this down a little bit. Just so I can write the 808 and hear myself. Something like that. Love Ableton. Let's consolidate that. Let's quantize it. Let's fold it. There's like this rule that I learned from watching a production video. It's like if you have to turn it so quiet you can't hear it, you should probably just turn it off. Sounding a bit sexual with that sound in it, you know. Let me try and save this. There's a really cool thing called Delay Designer. I love to use it if I'm finding the percussions a bit boring. There's one particularly called Glass. Okay. It'd be great to have some vinyl crackle. Let's see if this works. Vinyl crackle. Yeah. Oh, that's like a literal recorded one. I mean, it's authentic. Like, I've definitely found, like, a mood that I'm happy with. It's always got to be, like, airy and dark sounding, otherwise... I can make happy tunes, but I hate them. And, like, when I'm playing sets, I want to play, like, evil, percussive tracks. Just want a little, um, something melodic underneath. Okay, let's try and do something with that. The reason I use a template is because I ain't got time to find, like, fiddle around with, like, new sounds. I'm trying to make music right now. So this is just, like, hands-on, quick. I've got, like, some melodies. I've got my 808 that I always use. Just all my favourite sounds are just there. Um, the reason why I'm muting the... Like the kick and the snare and the clap. Just I just want to hear the music just to make sure it's like nothing sounds out of tune or off. Um, we try and write something else on top of this. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not classically trained, so it's just everything's by ear. Um, yeah, that would do. Yeah, again, just more textures. Once I got like the big chunk sorted, it makes the arrangement a lot easier, because then I could just take out stuff and mix stuff around. That can be like maybe one of the drops, because I really like that. Did 
this sounds really annoying. I can't, I can't keep time about the. It's not too bad. Oh, that's a nice rise, Martin. What a beautiful sound you are. I love sampling, experiment quite a lot with different samples and that's why I usually find my own samples. I get a bit paranoid that people are going to know where samples have come from so I try and F them up as much as possible. I don't like this clap either, you can go. Usually I put this in the EXS24 and separate the sounds. The EXS24 is Logic's inbuilt sampler. You. you can stay. Needs like a nice bass line. Let me see. I have a fake TR 303, like a Chinese, and maybe a serum. Oh, I'm like spending too much time on this. Arranging stuff, I usually just tend to do a big chunk like this and then start taking stuff out. So I'm still kind of new on Ableton, but it's by far the best DAW I've ever used just in terms of workflow um, and just getting something down pretty quickly. But let's try and make some sort of intro. All right, let's take out the bass. I don't know, I like loads of little variations. I feel like I really need to add like a chant in there. We got we got like a little intro, nine bar intro. Um, we got a big chunk, so we got half a tune, and then we'll probably put a break here, which can mimic the intro somehow. We can add an outro, so we got a little three minute song. <laughs> oh, I just want to add a little variation here. Just take out something like a snare. I spend a lot of time using the effects. That's why I take a long time to produce. This is what I do when I have no time and I have to finish a beat. So there's like a filter module in Logic that like has lots of different types of filters. This one is panning bad pass. It means it makes the beat a little bit more interesting without very much effort. But I feel like it's cheating a little bit. Let me get some bangs and drums in there really quick. Five minutes, you know, I heard that from the next one, they said five minutes. <laughs> okay, come on, this has got to work. Come on, be my friend, be my friend. It's really out of time! It's not fair! I protest. <laughs> You know what, I'm done. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Okay, that's the end of my one minute 30 tune. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, Iconica, Lucy, you have uh, taken on the sample challenge and we are now here in another studio to have a little listen through what you've been up to. How, how did you feel like you got on? Maybe feel a bit anxious beforehand, but once you get down, you're like, you remember why you actually do this and that. This is like your favorite game to play, like yeah. just play it in front of people. Yeah. Would you say that's the same for you as well? Lisa? Yeah, I usually produce on headphones in like random spaces and I don't usually, like even my friends, I won't really show them the tune until it's done. But like you said, you get used to it and you're like, you get comfortable into it. And maybe a little bit too comfortable because then you forget the time. But it was a fun experience, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think I did all right. I had a good start. I liked the sounds and I was finding nice sounds out of the sounds. But it didn't quite come together in the end how I wanted it. In the first hour, I'll just like build a 16 or build a couple 16s. I never usually get into the structure of it, which is where I struggled on this because it's like, Five minutes and I was like, ah, oh, I'm not, yeah, not done. <laughs> I think I made a all right, like rough sketch. 
I made an arrangement, but it's there to be finished. Beyond the sounds in the pack, how much of your own kind of sounds did you bring into the project? I use my own AOA and some bells and a riser and a crash cymbal because you don't have a crash cymbal. Yeah, I felt like it needed like a vocal or a chant or something. Yeah, that's a good um, point. Like a man voice. A man voice. Yeah, you'll hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I used maybe 30% the samples you gave me and then the rest was like, I love the bell sounds. I like like maybe less like punchy drums, mm. especially when I'm starting like to layer them. Without further ado, let's get one of them on so we can have a quick listen. We'll get Iconicas on first. That's basically the gist of it. Yeah. Ooh, cool. That was sick. I can definitely hear that like your whole vibe is in there. I think that one thing that was gonna be interesting about this was just like seeing how people's processes work. The 808, it's kind of got that drill glide in there. Yeah. Like, would you say that that's an influence on your sound at the moment? Yeah, definitely. A um, bit of drill, um, just mixed with bits of like underground club music from everywhere. I like everywhere. Yeah. There's like some nice textures in there, like the, the bells in the background, really yeah. subtle. But just try to like just level it out a little bit. Like mix down can do so much. And I guess like the first hour, like the mix down is not really even something that comes into yeah. the equation until way further down. Yeah, but I still like to like mix just so it's just easier to work with and for later. Gives so sounds not, their own space. Yeah, so, mix, yeah, yeah, exactly. Lucy, are you ready to uh, walk us through yours? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Did you get some edits in there as well? Like, yeah. I've got a bad attention span. <laughs> That's sick. Yeah, there's like loads of little changes and loads of little variations. I think at the end, I finally found like the bounce that I was looking for. And then like, it could have gone on to have some like bigger drums, like added the drums. I used a lot of the drums, but I cut a lot of the frequencies out of them. I think you did right to do that though as well because of the kind of the grit and the dirt that was in there. It would have sounded weird if the drums were really crunchy and clean on top of it. But like you saying as well about like how you start making out like 16s, few patterns, you can hear that, like the thought process in there. We're trying to find the, the, the vibe. The, the right path. Nothing sounds awkward. Yeah. Such nice textures and like nice flow. Like each pattern flows really well. It's nice yeah. to see the difference as well. It's crazy, huh? Yeah, yeah. it's just so like different. totally different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I kind of like hope that was going to be the case. You both experiment so much in production. So it's been like mad interesting to hear. That was sick. Yeah, thank you very so much. So have we passed? Uh, yeah, you've passed the flying <laughs> colours. Lucy, Iconica, big up. Yes. And uh, congratulations, sample challenge done. We're out. Thanks for watching another episode of Plasticians Lab. If you're a producer and you fancy having a crack at the sample challenge, get yourselves into the description, download the samples, get yourself involved. I can't wait to hear what you come up with.